Bowling Brook in the world. Throughout the war, German aircraft has been. Thank <laughs> you. 
stating what they're not. They like were cursing and twisting above the bottom of the sex. And he would take us in on these head on the tanks, which we hoped we could get there before the 109 could, would come down onto us to protect their bombers. And invariably we would, because we'd go in and head on the tanks. We'd go straight through the bombers. If there was any knockdown, of course, the CD approach would play it. And down you go. That was it. He would then, you'd then be attacked by these 109s, and you'd have to look him up to yourself then, with every man ready for himself then. Today, we commemorate the 15th of September as Battle of Britain Day. In 1940, it saw the heaviest look of a raid of that summer. The target, London. This was the crucial day, the day on which fighter demand scored a decisive victory. The day that led Hitler to postpone indefinitely his invasion plans. Here is the Midnight Union, and this is our Armand and Gerald Reading. No wonder he pays his tribute today.
but here she is coming back in front of us. And the last three will be accelerating, accelerating her down the line of the runner. Size of that bomb bay there, and 
you'll be able to see Bombdor's closing as she comes back round in front of us again. That enormous bomb bay, of course, the heart of the bomber, that was what carried the 21 1,000 pound bombs all the way to Falkland Islands. So, 10 tons or so. Staggering about. These were, let's not forget, um, dumb bombs, wartime type bombs, World War II. And they were not guided in any way, so if we needed to hit a pinpoint target like a bit of a runway, you had to really do overkill. So of the 21 uh, 1,000 pound bombs they dropped, they hit the runway with two of them. Let me just finish those companies to whom we owe so much. Uh, Beagle Technology, Cranfield Aerospace, Goodrich, Kearsley Airways, Megic, Messier Doughty, and Serco. Now as she comes round this time, uh, you will see the Bombay doors closing. At the moment, the Bombay just comes to the But as we know, this is her last season, and it is for three technical authority companies that will finally bring Vulcan's illustrious flying life to a close. They have together decided to cease their support at the end of the 2015 season. And it's not about the supply of spare parts, it is about the mandatory third party support. Now she is still as safe as any aircraft flying today, but she's done 10% more hours than any other Vulcan before. She's into an area of unknown, unknown, and the enjoyed by around 3 million people every year, 50% more than three years ago, and she's going to do probably another 20, maybe more air shows this year, so, you know, you do have other chances to see her. When she's finished, uh, she's going to become part of uh, an extraordinary team at her home base of Robin Hood Airport, not to Sheffield, otherwise known as Royal Air Force Finningley. The Vulcan team and the Aviation Skills Partnership are going to create a new life for her as the centrepiece of the Etna project. It will be an aviation academy and a heritage skills centre. It will showcase technological achievements. It will be the next best thing to fly with things like fast taxiing for 558. It's called Mount Etna. That was the workshop for the God Vulcan, and the Etna project will be like the Eden project, but for engineers. Now, here's a special treat. As she flies down the runway, you see the red arrows giving her a
for Buffalo. Well, thank you very much indeed, Sean Mathis, for taking those. So you'll actually be back, I know, a little later on, but uh, right now we just have a few movements and one more display to uh, stop in. And tell us all about that, because I'm back then to Thank you very much, George. And it's to the rotary wings. And an unmistakable shape with those stark wings under which are mounted weapons pylons and the stepped up twin cockpits. The other in front of the pilot and the raised position behind. It wasn't always like that. The profile of the early hinds was different with the very large fall in September 1969 and the Soviet Army brought it into service about three years later. It's an interesting concept, this, not just an attack helicopter, but very much a battlefield assault platform and to that end it was intended to have infantry lift as well as strike capabilities and the troops on board were initially able to mount small weapons in the side windows. In towards us, about to pull up for a wing over. Very much more capable machine. 